Hey y'all, uh, my name is William Austin and this is the Saxophone Factory. I am um, going to do a, uh, a clarinet lesson today for, my, for, for some of my clarinet students. It is out of the Rubank, where is it? There it is, Rubank for clarinet, elementary method. Um, it is going to be lesson nine. I think I've done lesson eight. If not, I'll have to go back and do it um, because we're gonna start talking about uh, dotted notes what a dot does to a note. A dot adds half of the note's normal value to it, half. So for instance, if you have a, a, a whole note in four, four time, it's gonna get four counts. If you add a dot to it, not on top of it, but next to it, to its right side, it's now gonna get an extended number of counts and that number of counts is the half of four, which is two, the original four. So that note now gets, let me get my fingers around. There you go, six counts, six counts, okay? If you have a half note in a four, in four, four time, and it normally gets two counts, half of two is one for a total of three. Make sense? All right, now, if you have a quarter note that gets one count, half of one is half or 0.5. So you get one and a half counts. It works with bigger, no bigger notes and smaller notes the very same way. And I would say it like this, the dot adds half of the note's normal value, okay? half of a note's normal value. Now, for me, it was super important to say the right thing the right way. And I'll tell you, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Because my band director insisted on it. He insisted on it. And I'm gonna show you who he is. Let me, let me get out of the way. Let me try to get out of the way. I'll move the camera. There you go. That gentleman right there, his name is Lonnie Keen. Lonnie Keen has passed away. And that's a picture of him at Brandon High School where I went to school. Uh, it was very, very important that if you said the right thing, you would do the right thing. You would understand it better. So I am, a, I am a stickler, Mr. Mr. Keen was awesome, by the way. I am really a stickler for saying it the right way. And the way you say it about dotted notes is this. It adds half of a note's normal value. And as long as you say it that way, you'll learn it that way and you'll never forget it and you'll be able to do it. So let's look at a lesson nine, okay? Let's go ahead and look at lesson nine. Uh, and um, number one, let me get my metronome happening. Let's get the metronome going on. There, there it is. Um, it has three sections, section A, section B, and section C. The rhythm is written underneath the notes in all three sections. Let's go ahead and do section A for lesson nine. We can see one, two, and three, four is the rhythm. One, two, and three, four. <laughs> Pretty easy, right? In section B, we have something that um, that we've already seen. It's a tie. A tie takes two notes that are the same and it adds their value together. Say it with me. A tie takes two notes that are the same and adds their value together. Easy enough, right? So we can see on, here on the page, we have the quarter note and the first eighth note tied together. The quarter note gets one count, 
the A film gets half count. So one plus a half is one and a half. Or for those of you who insist on saying 1.5, okay, that's what it is. So it gets one and a half counts. Let's go ahead and play that. One and three, four, one and three, four. It gets all of one, the first part of count and the, and the first part of count two. Make sense? All righty. Now look at C, section C on, on exercise number one. It's got a, a, a quarter note with a dot next to it. What did we just say about what a dot does to a note? A dot does what? Add half of the notes, normal value, right? Half of the notes, normal value. So, the, so normally the, the, the quarter note would get one count. Half of one is a half or 0.5. So now it gets one and a half counts just like the tied note in section B. So it should sound exactly the same. One and three, four. And you can tell with the rhythm written underneath it that it gets all of count one, the first part of count two, and then there's the and of two, and all of three and all of four. Let's play it. Got it? Again, if I'm going too fast, stop the video, slow it down, do it again. All right, now, now that we have that rhythm, we're going to go ahead and play that rhythm in exercise number two. Let me get my head in this. That's really in my there we go. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and play the rhythm in number two. Okay. That's Mr. Keno on my shoulder there, making sure I do it right. Um, it's the same rhythm we just played in section C of number one. Here we go. Two. Ready? <laughs> Now we're going to do number three. Let's look at the rhythm in number three. Oh, it's exactly the same. And when I say the rhythm is exactly the same, what I mean is that the we have a dotted quarter note, an eighth note, and two quarter notes. A dotted quarter note, an eighth, and two quarter notes. Just like section C in number one, and just like in um, exercise number two. Okay. Let's go ahead and do number three. It's a repetition. It's a thinking one and three, four. So I know it's get to getting to know where that half of count two actually is. One and it's on the upbeat. Your band director or your music director might say it's on the upbeat. And what they mean is that if you're patting your foot, shouldn't do, or you're patting your your hand against your against your chest, we have one. And from the up, one is on the down, two is on the down, three is on the down, four is on the down, 
the and of every beat is on the up. One and two, one and three, four, one and three, four, one and three, four. <clears throat> now, all that's really important that you know that, but it's more important that you can play it rhythmically and evenly. And that's why we invoke the uh, metronome to help you to do that. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to do the big three liner in. Uh, in number four, ready? Let's go ahead and crank up metronome. <clears throat> One, two. to tell you that has a b flat in it not a b natural right b natural is the one in the middle b natural is right here the one that we're playing is a b flat it's the first one right okay all right the next exercise has a what what we're going to call a pick what we call a pickup a pickup note let me go ahead and ditch that background how about that there you go um, the next exercise has a pickup note. And that just means that it starts on what musicians will call the antecedent or pickup note. So if we look at number five, we see that quarter note all in there by itself. That's not beat one, that's beat four of what would have been the previous measure. I know it's a little confusing, isn't it? A little bit, but not really. So it would be beat four of the previous measure. And you're asking, well, where's the rest of the measure? Well, look down at the last measure. There's only three beats in that measure. That's where it is, it's kind of split up that way. And, it, and why? It's because sometimes melodies start that way. So the person who had to write it down came up with that little methodology to get that done. So it actually starts on beat what? That's right, beat four, beat four. All right, let's start, let's start the metronome. One, two, three. <laughs> Zine. Learn this one because then you can play it on New Year's Eve for your family. It's a song they all play when the, you know, when the clock strikes midnight for the new year. And you participate in that ceremony, in that celebration. Right there, that's number five from lesson nine. But you can see most of it was one and three, four, one and three, four, making sure that that eighth note's on the what? The upbeat. Because we always wanna be upbeat about things. All right, now here's a number six. Here's a place where they use a tie where they can't use a dotted note because it crosses the bar line. In number six, we, have, we are in two, four. 
So a quarter note still gets a beat or a count. Um, and we have the half note, the first half note tied to the first eighth note of the next measure. So we get what? Two, at, two beats for the half note and a half a beat or half a count for the eighth note. So that note gets two and a half counts. Two and a half counts. So that's where the tie is. And then we have a dotted quarter note toss in there. So you have to be really careful about counting. Again, the metronome is your best friend here. Include the metronome in your practice. Sometimes the metronome, quite frankly, when you're learning to use it, is annoying. And you don't think it's right. I'm gonna tell you, 99.99.99999, six percent of the time it is correct and it's us and not it. All right, we're gonna invoke the metronome. Um, one, two, ready? And if I took that too fast, practice it and then start the video again. All righty, well, that was all of lesson nine. I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it. And again, if I went too fast, just stop, do it again, all right? All righty, again, my name is William Austin. This is the Saxophone Factory. And this, is, and this was a lesson from the uh, Rubank Elementary Method for Clarinet. For those of you who are clarinet players, beginning clarinet players, and uh, for those of you who are trying to pick up another instrument, and clarinet is a natural for saxophone players to pick up next. Um, and, then, and then maybe flute. All right? If you don't already play like piano or bass or something. But as far as wind instruments go, it's a, it's, it's a, clarinet is the next logical step. And if you're a clarinet player, saxophone is the next logical step. All righty, we got a guy here making from somebody else. So listen, go out there and keep practicing. Practice every day. The more time you put in, the more, the more good stuff you will get out. We'll see you when we see you. Bye-bye now.